Good morning students. Today I am going to explain the quest the panorama of India's past from chapter 3 <coughs> from the discovery of India written by Jawaharlal Nehru. The quest the panorama of India's past has been excerpted from the discovery of India from chapter 3 written by Jawaharlal Nehru. In this topic he discussed about India's past. Nehru tried to understand and analyze India from his own point of view. He recollected his childhood memories for his view about India. He was so proud and pride of the world, old and legend stories of India. But he was ashamed of himself by seeing around the superstitious belief and outworn practices in India. He was so much worried about the poverty which was prevailing in India. When he grew up, he concentrated on freedom of India. At first, he desired his country to become free. According to him, India possessed rich and immemorial past. But it was dominated by Britain. That was a reason for India's poverty. It was a reason for him to act quickly for India's freedom. But there were so many questions pricking in his mind. First question, how did she lose that old strength, how did she, how she lost it completely, how does she fit into the modern world. Then he told us that the future of India needs intimate cooperation politically, economically, culturally with other countries of the world. He wanted to change the outlook and appearance of India. But he questioned about the knowledge about India to himself. He doubted himself whether he knew Indian heritage clearly. Through this topic, he tells us that he stood on a mound of Mahanchadro in the Indus Valley in the northwest of India and saw around houses and streets of the ancient city which existed over 5000 years ago. According to him, it was a great civilization. The rivers which flow from the Himalayan mountains to the plains were also inspired and attracted Nehru. Through this many foreign invaders, through this that means uh, through this plains and through this rivers, many foreign invaders and tribes entered into India. He praised Brahmaputra which flows calmly between mountain and plains. The Ganges is the heart of river in India which tells the story of Indian civilization and culture as well as rise and fall of empires. Then Nehru portrayed the monuments of India. He visited monuments, ruins and ancient sculptures, Ajanta, Helora, Elephant Caves and other places. He also visited beautiful buildings in Agra and Delhi which proclaims Indians past history. Next, Nehru described about bathing festival called Kumbh Mela in the city of Allahabad and Hadwar. On this day, thousands of people come to bathe in the Ganges. The description about this festival can be seen in the writings of Chinese pilgrims and others who visited India 1300 years ago. Nehru really wondered the faith of our country people on this famous river. The journeys of Nehru gave deep insight into the past. This gave a mental picture of India and its people in the past. Both men and women had made a cultural stability for so many years. Then Nehru visited Saranath near Banaras. Here Buddha gave his first sermon 2000 years ago. His words echoed in the mind of Nehru when he was standing there. Ashoka pillar with their inscription made him to think of Emperor Ashoka who was great, greater than any other king. When he was at Fatehpur Sikri, he imagined Akbar who conversed and debated with the learned people. Learned people. He also praised Akbar who was seeking answer to the eternal problem of man. Long panorama of India's history stood in front of him. Its ups and downs, triumphs and defeats stood in front of his eyes. Nehru believed that after India, only China has had such tradition and culture. 
the panorama of the past gradually merged into the unhappy present. He was disappointed that India was under the British rule over 180 years. British rule in India was like an interlude in India's long history. Then he talked about nationalism of India. He told us about the nationalism and internationalism. The war forced everybody into the net of nationalism. But the nationalism was considered as backwardness and narrow-mindedness. But Nehru says, type of so-called internationalism is only an extension of a narrow British nationalism. But India accepted real internationalism and coordination of the independent nation-state to a world organization. And I would like to thank Ochiv.org because of the text. Thank you students. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching.